So instantaneous velocity is asking the question, what is the speed at this very moment? Unlike average velocity, where you look at a displacement, final minus initial, over some given amount of time, this is within the limit where it becomes infinitesimal. So what we're really doing is we are sampling the speed, or sampling the, the displacement, at such a brief moment that it has no time to really change. In calculus, we always take this to the limit to where the change in time is so small it's considered to be infinitesimal when we compare it to the displacement of the time. Um, again, it, you know, with uh, calculus, although this is an algebraic uh, physics course, it is important to understand what we mean by derivatives. And if we take the first derivative of displacement graphed as a function of time, that's really looking at a tangent line to that particular point on the graph and finding the slope of that tangent line. So it's like an instantaneous slope, um, measuring so quickly that, uh, in essence, the time that it takes to, to take the measurement, final minus initial, is zero. So again, we can imagine going from this position to this position and calculating the average velocity. The average velocity would be how far we, I'm sorry, how much our position has changed divided by how far we go. If we keep making those measurements between the two points smaller and smaller and smaller, we are getting a um, more closely related average velocity to what the actual velocity is at some point between them. Eventually, if we make the spread so small, it's essentially zero, that point right there, the slope at that point, would be represented again by a tangent line uh, there. So again, instantaneous, we're asking, what is the velocity at this very moment? And drawing a tangent line, you know, for any function like this, we can probably sketch it pretty accurately, you know, because the tangent line is the only line that intersects that function, okay, at only one point. And of course, that is different between what is happening uh, over a much longer period of time where we can do rise over run uh, between two points. So again, sort of like rise over run, but over a tangent line that passes through a point. That's sort of the visual difference here. The graph uh, shows position is a function of time for two trains running parallel to the track. Which of the following is true? Let's try to use some of what we know already. At time TV, both trains have the same velocity. Is that true? No, at time TV, if we take a tangent line to those two, A's tangent line is really, well, it's constant, so I guess that goes against saying, you know, a line going through exactly one point. A never changes. So its instantaneous velocity is also its average velocity at any two points. We can clearly see what that slope is. But B, a tangent line, would have less of a slope. So we can't say the trains will have the same velocity. Both trains speed up all the time. Also not true. A slope is constant. Therefore, if we're taking a look at the instantaneous velocity at any time, it's the same value. B, however, the slope is greater here at the beginning. It's going faster. And then it gradually slows down as the slope becomes less and less. Okay? Both trains have the same velocity at some point before TV. Okay, so that. Here's the slope of A, fairly easy to see. Slope of B goes from here to here. So that's true. At some point, both will have the same slope as the function for B matches the slope for the function of A. Train A is longer than train B. We have no way of knowing that. Uh, all of the above statements are true. No. So both trains have the same velocity because at some point they have the same instantaneous slope. So again, the concept of instantaneous velocity is this dx dt, the derivative of position as a function of time. And for those of you who have taken calculus, you know that the first derivative represents the slope of any function. Okay? If it's a straight line, real simple. That slope never changes. If it's a varying function, that slope can go up and down and can change to different values. But what that slope is at a single point tells you that velocity at that moment. 
Likewise, we could actually use calculus to integrate both sides and find out what the position is given a velocity over some uh, time. Now, the notation for uh, derivatives in the Leibniz form will sometimes be written like this. In most calculus courses, this is the way that we see derivatives. In some mechanics courses, we use Newton's notion, notation. And in, uh, yeah, notion, it does say notion. Notation, it should say notation. In Newton's notation, the dot represents the derivative with respect to time. So this and this are exactly the same. The dot means take the first derivative, the slope, of this x with respect to time. Now again, looking at instantaneous velocity, here we have a slope that changes quite, quite a bit. Here we have a slope which is constant over the entire form. Here we have a slope that's constant here, but then changes. In describing the different uh, motions here, I would say that the velocity starts out positive, then it becomes less and less, it stops, then it goes backward, and goes faster and faster in the negative direction. The slope is positive before this point right here at time one half second, and from one half second on, or I should say after one half second, at one half second the velocity is zero because the slope is zero, the tangent line is downhill, so we have a negative velocity. Here, the velocity is always negative, and in fact you can take the slope anywhere on this line, and it's going to be the same no matter which two points you pick. Finally here, this is discontinuous in the slope, but continuous in the function. It starts out negative, and at that instant in time, it changes to become positive. 